So, this is the Stumac fret press system. I just picked it up. I figured we'd do an unboxing and maybe a light review. Let's get to it. So the first thing I want to mention is the shipping costs for Stumac. I've never been a fan of their shipping prices. They've been pretty high. And they offer this membership, like an annual fee for $49 to have free shipping. And I never thought it was really worth it until I put this in my cart. So the shipping to ship this fret press system came out to $40. I didn't want to pay that. I put the membership $49 fee in there and the shipping vanishes. So a nice little hack if you're going to be buying something that's heavy from Stumac is instead of paying the shipping charges, just add their annual membership fee and it basically zeroes out the shipping for whatever you're buying. I also now have a entire year of free shipping with Stumac. I think it was worth it for an extra $9. So it looks like they are just using brown paper as the kind of shipping packaging inside there. So the first thing is they're offering this little guy, which is the cork neck call. I already have one of these, uh, but having another one for the system might be nice. I don't know what this is. This is the working table for the fret arbor press. So then these are the brass inserts for the fret system here. And then the main thing is the fret press itself, the arbor press. Invoice with, I believe, the instructions just printed out in black and white. All right, so it looks like these are just black and white printed instructions. I guess there's really nothing to it. It's two pages front and back. It would be nice to have something a little bit nicer for the price. All right, so the first things first, this says made in China, right there on the box. So let's open this up. Another little bag. Uh, I'm not sure, little hardware pieces. So make sure we don't lose that. Light it out. So it doesn't look red like in the photographs on the website. It's like a pink. Um, there were a lot of comments about it being full of like a grease, I'm not seeing that. There's some chips here in the paint where you can see the bare metal chips here. There's some paint flex here on the bed. We have some bits and pieces. So I assume this goes something like this. And this is plastic? Is this plastic? This isn't metal. It's heavy. And there was certainly a lot of like tapped holes and a lot of hardware on here. Okay, I'm gonna cut into this. I'm gonna get my box cutter here. I'm gonna cut into this just for you. Look at that. Plastic. Wow, I was expecting something made out of metal. I don't know, I mean, it is what it is. I was expecting more. So my expectations were high, basically, and yeah, it's a fret press system. It'll press frets, it'll do the job. I did get some cool brass inserts. Uh, here's the fret press thingy. I have no idea what this stuff is for, but it's clearly for the plastic table. There's some other things in here that look plastic-y too. All right, let's put it together. 
Yeah, the first sentence on the arbor setup is unpack the arbor press and wipe off any excess oil or grease that may be on the housing. There's like, this is dry as a bone. There's zero excess, there's zero everything. No grease whatsoever, no oil covering this, nothing protecting it. Um, obviously this was a complaint in some of the comments, so maybe Stu Mac had them wipe it down before it shipped from China, but it's dry as a bone. There's nothing on here. I actually think there should be something on here to protect it. All right, so here's my first complaint. So I'm reading through these instructions and kind of the first thing for mounting, and these are just suggestions, of course, which says for best results, the press should be secured to a bench or dedicated workspace. Makes sense, no big deal. Mount the upper press to a piece of plywood for easy clamping to your bench. Also, not a big deal. There's some mounting holes over here on the side. Um, you can see these bolts here, and we'll just mount it onto some plywood. Not a big deal, I'm okay with that. But then, right here, to attach the fretboard table, which is this plastic fence table, drill a 5 16th hole through the plywood and your bench. What? And then you thread the table, screw rod through the hole, et cetera, et cetera. Another method is to cut a recess into the plywood that lets the press overhang the edge of your bench. I don't know how I feel about the overhang. I don't know how I feel about having to drill a hole through my bench. This is where it gets weird. I kind of feel like if you're selling a fret press system, this table should have a way to mount onto the actual arbor press on its own. They have to design a way to secure and fit this table into the press itself. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the press onto a piece of plywood, that's gonna be step one, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do about how to put this table on here. All right, so we're gonna set this up and I'm gonna do this in the correct order of operations that you need to do this to set it up properly. So the first thing we're gonna do is put this fret call in, right? So this is the thing that goes in here. They give you a Allen wrench, you're gonna loosen up the set screw. You wanna put this in and you're thinking, why would you do that first? And the reasons will become clear. So the fret call has an indentation here. And that's where the set screw is gonna go. I've already loosened the set screw. You kind of stick it in there, tighten it just a little bit till you see it's getting caught, till you feel like it's getting caught. So right there it's caught in between the indentations and you can just kind of clamp it down. That's the first bit we want to do. Second bit we want to do is going to be this little thing right here and that's going to go right here. So this little guy is for clamping down this arm. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking these order of operations don't make sense, but they will. So just clamp it down and set this in the center. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, I know this is gonna be a weird one too, is this little guy. So this nut was kind of just loose in the box and I don't know where it goes, but I'm assuming it goes here. So just do that, we're gonna stick it right here. That's another thing, check out this Steam Mac thing. Let me show you something real quick. Look at the terrible little burr. I mean, it's a huge burr. Let's stick it in anyway. All right, so this guy is to hold the ram down. So if you're gluing frets, you can like stick it and the spring doesn't engage, right? That's gonna be the first steps. We wanna put this guy, the fret call, and then this little wing nut. And here's the reason. Out of the box, this doesn't come at the correct height. The instructions say that we need to have at least one and a quarter inch here if we're using the table and two and a half inches when we're fretting using that wood neck support. And so this comes really, really low. So we need to adjust this. So we need to adjust this by disengaging the spring. So this is the spring here and we're gonna just pop that open. So we do have yet another little Allen wrench that it came with. And we're gonna tighten this down so that it's not moving, right? Because the spring is gonna be disengaged when we take this off, so just torque that down. Now you can undo this guy, right? And this whole system, both this and this, are basically screwed together, so be careful here. All right. All right, so there's the spring. Now this little guy here, so when we put him back on there, we want to make sure the spring goes in this little hole here, right there. Okay, but now let's go ahead and adjust that ram. All right, so I want this with the table, so I'm gonna put my table on. 
All right. I'm going to get this handle out of the way. That's why we put this wing nut on here. And I might be using both the wooden stand and this, so I might go a little bit higher than one and a quarter, but right there. And then I'll lock this down. And that's why we put this sucker on here. So this is at the right height that I want. So now we have to put this little guy back on there. As I mentioned, we want to make sure the spring is in that little hole. Allen key. And then just torque it down however much you like. So now I can unlock this. It's floating where we want it. And then bring it down, pop right there where I need it. And then I sp the spring springs back. All right, so now we're gonna put on this bolt here. And there are two of these little nuts. Just screw one of them in all the way and stick this guy in here. This is the stop. Put your other bolt in on the other side. And we'll torque this down with some wrenches. All right. There's the stop. So the idea is you press your fret, the spring goes back, and it stops. So the next set of adjustments has to do with correcting the slop. You can see there's a lot of wiggle room and play in the ram that's inside here. So we're gonna take the same Allen wrench and there is a set screw here with a sort of a jam nut that allows us to adjust the slop going this way. And then this bottom one here, we can adjust for the slop going this way. So here's the deal. You don't want to adjust this where you have friction. So if I tighten this, I can keep tightening until I feel that pin hit the ram. And we don't want it to actually scrape, right? It's right there. I've lost all the slop. There's zero slop in this direction because this pin is hitting it. And we don't want that. We're going to back it off a little because when we're pressing, we don't want it to scrape at all. We don't want any friction no friction. You're just going to kiss it. And then when you have it set, then you can use a wrench to tighten the jam nut and you're going to do the same thing on this side. So this side is quite a bit of slop. Just gently trying to get rid of some of that slop without that pin putting too much pressure. Okay, right there the slop's completely gone, meaning I need to back off. So I'm going to back off. Now I'm going to just tighten the jam nuts. So I'm holding it steady and then tightening the jam nut. And then I'll test again just to make sure that we didn't over tighten. It feels like the spring's not totally going, so I'm too tight. There you go. So you don't want any friction on that sucker. You want the spring to do its job. And I like this setting. You can always readjust after you use the tool. The spring works catching it and then it stops with the stop bar. These are all set. Got rid of most of the play or the slop. This is all set up at the proper height for the fence and we're good here. So the next set of bits that come with the kit are this threaded rod, right? And this washer, I assume the washer goes in there. And then we have this, I don't know, plastic knob. I'm just gonna set that in like that. Another bit of plastic goes in here. That's going to be for mounting the fence underneath our plywood. So that's set. All right. This is the last bit, which is the fence itself. We have a couple of parts here. We have the actual fence, a piece of aluminum. The aluminum itself has countersunk holes for these screws. And then we have these set screws that go in like that. And the idea here is that you could turn these and you can see that the table will start to skew in any direction. This guy will go underneath to secure it. So that's how you essentially set up very quickly the Stumac fret press system.
there are really no instructions. Just make sure you do it in that order of operations so you can actually set everything up properly. But I kind of wish that there was some kind of rubber stop here instead of metal. Because I wouldn't be able to let go of this and it not bang that hard. So maybe we can put like a piece of cork on there. That'd be kind of cool. So I bolted down the fret press onto a piece of plywood. Two bolts that are countersunk underneath and everything is working perfectly. I like the idea of a self-contained fret press system that I can bring to my bench, clamp down. When I'm done, unclamp it and then move it out of the way to another part of the shop. That is actually very appealing. I think overall, my opinion is that it's a pretty good fret press system. I think what it's missing is a level of detail. One in materials, I think this bed should not be plastic. It should be aluminum at least. I think if it were aluminum, it would really tie in the whole system together. I think that guitar builders, luthiers, are chasing after almost a level of boutiqueness in our materials and in our tools. And this does not fit the bill. This looks a little rough around the edges. I feel it's a very utilitarian and rugged tool, like a hammer. So I don't know if that opinion means anything to you. It presses frets. It does it very well. That's all that matters, right? Or is it? I've had this fret press for one week and I got to use it on an actual job. So I had a neck that was made out of wenge, fretboard made out of ebony, very strong hardwoods. And I really tried to torque down on this arbor press, putting all my weight and all my strength on it. I wanted to see two things. What would happen to that fret if I used all my strength and weight? What would that fret do with the wood? Would it sink in deeper? What would happen? I was also trying to break this plastic table on purpose. And I couldn't. Everything just worked out perfectly. There were still two concerns. One was all these clamp down bolts for the ram and for this handle kept coming loose. I couldn't really get this bolt to clamp down. If you remember, that bolt had a huge burr on it. So I had to go in there and scrape that burr off with a file. Finally, once the head of that bolt was flat and it could make contact with the ram, it started to work. Same thing with this bolt. During the fretting process, doing 22 frets, this arm kept getting loose. I even got a pair of pliers to torque this down, it still is getting loose. So there's certainly quality control issues with these bolts, and I think Steamac could certainly catch those before they leave China. The second thing is the paint. It came chipped right out of the box, and every time I touch it, it continues to chip, and there's paint flex on the plywood. This also could have been caught with quality control before it left China even when it got into the States. But the big one is the fact that this is a plastic table. And I just don't think plastic has any place on a tool like this. It should be aluminum, even though this works perfectly fine. I think I'm just probably being spoiled a little bit. I think I expect aluminum when I see something like this. So conclusions, this is a great fret press system. I can't see myself using anything else. I tried my hardest to bend and break this thing and I couldn't. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and take it easy.